We're back in Pattaya, Thailand, the familiar place where Leo died. But now we're here for another reason. One of Leo's former associates, while his girlfriend and sister were sleeping, went on a path of destruction. And through a fit of rage, took it out on them, causing bodily harm and injuries. By using the most unassuming weapon, a golf club. His name is Connor Murphy, a very close friend of Tony Huge, whose home is where Leo died. While some think this could be a stunt for social media, others are questioning if he had anything to do with Leo's murder, since the killer has never been found. I've contacted the authorities and the press in Thailand for exclusive information and footage to give you this inside story. So I wanted to get more information on what could have happened with Connor Murphy in Pattaya, Thailand. So I reached out to some of the press there, and they were very helpful in getting me CCTV footage, uh, exclusive footage. Uh, I have a good relationship with the Pattaya News, so they've always been wonderful. Um, and I've got some footage to show everybody. I reached out to the authorities in Thailand to find out what the legal situation is with Connor. Was he arrested? Was he not arrested? What's going to happen with him? I also reached out to Tony Huge for a statement from him. Now, when this happened, I know a lot of people are saying, I know Greg Doucette made a video which got me thinking, saying, you know, this could be a hoax. Connor Murphy has a history of crying wolf, pretending he's crazy, pretending he drinks the man's stuff, or he did, we don't know. But he has a history of doing all types of crazy things, so why would we believe him now? And I can definitely see the side of the argument that Greg is saying. However, when I've been thinking about it more the last couple of days, there's some things that are, are, are going on in my mind, and I'm like, in the end, why would anyone want to go viral for beating a woman? That's not something you want to go viral for. If this is something, a stage video for YouTube, like Connor said he was doing, and which Greg believes it is, where was the cameras filming this? I talked to Vigorous Steve. Vigorous Steve said the same thing. He goes, where was the cameras if this is a stunt? And Vigorous Steve is in Thailand, so there's some things he may know about that we don't know. And then, where are you going to post it? You can't post that shit on YouTube. You're going to post it on Rumble. No one's going to watch it. So where would he film this type of chaos, right? Busting up the whole house, busting up the woman, the poor girls. They're not even women yet. Where are you going to post that without getting in trouble anyway? And there's some other things here I'm going to go over with you. But first, I want to show you uh, the neighbor had a CCTV uh, camera in his yard and he recorded it. And this was Connor during the chaos. Listen to him scream. Oh, now, the footage that I have is unedited. It's the raw footage that the cameraman filmed in Thailand. And I have to censor some of it. I can't show it to you all on here because I can't put that on YouTube. But the one thing I found very interesting is the next day, Connor wasn't arrested. I had to watch this three times back to back to back until I really figured out what he actually did. He looped the track, the 2315, looped at the 35 loop the time back again through a whole block of new you know connor chanting threw it in there in replace in replacement of like a 20 second block of footage so he literally took out a block replaced it with another block of whatever didn't implicate something else and then there's a 20 second block that he tried to um make it seem like it wasn't like a concurrent thing like if it was maybe a few words that you weren't supposed to say it would go in sequential order and then you would you would hear those pauses and like what he needed to take out if it was a, a racial slur or a a bad word something like that you would see it sequentially taken out no what he did was actually take a whole chunk of footage out and replace it with a chunk and then reloop the time i like john and I think he's an independent journalist and I think he rides the fence and he's torn on, you know, how do I report on a murderer that's my friend? You feel me? But at this point in time, this is collusion. This is wrong, John. And we, we know, I know if I got to go, I got to go do my due diligence to get the real footage. It's probably something that implicated. It was either background talking in, in Thai with the couple that was there. It was either something that implicated Tony or something that implicated Connor period or something that you got told to take out man see that's what i'm saying like if that piece if i find out that that piece would have solved the murder come on dog so you you gotta like this is why i'm saying your friendship with a murder has clouded a little bit of your investigative journalism but i still i still rock with you tough because we wouldn't be able to get here without you bro so i have to i have to hold you accountable but i rock with you bro I rock with you, but after you see my video, after I've seen yours, just know the truth lies in the facts. And I respect you, dog, but this is some weird shit. Oh, 
So it seems like Connor Murphy was celebrating the pagan holiday and the lighting of the fires May 1st as a Satanist. He is very familiar with these ideologies and these practices. So Connor Murphy was only celebrating his God, the devil, and May 1st and what it signifies in the pagan ideology. It was symbolic for him that day. He was out. I think in Top Golf in Thailand, all bandaged up golfing, which I found very strange. You guys recognize this club? Hmm. Y'all recognize this club? So I was like, you know, why is he not arrested for what he did? You know, I was not 100% on percent. And do you recognize this woman? Their loyalty is strong. I wonder why. I wonder why these two are inseparable laws there are in Thailand. So I talked to the officials in Thailand, some of them involved uh, with this. And they told me that in Thailand, when you have an issue, a domestic issue with a girlfriend, a wife, a daughter, a brother, whatever the case may be, domestic and home, they don't get involved. And the only time a person gets arrested is when the other person who was injured or involved in it press charges on the other person. Now I'm going to show some more footage here on the screen. And that is at the scene, Tony Hughes' girlfriend. She's very close friends with Connor Murphy's girlfriend who was injured in this incident. And what I'm going to say is, if we're wondering why Connor Murphy is not arrested, the only time would be if she pressed those charges, like I was saying. So why is she not pressing charges? Well, I just showed you guys with the Thai press release that this really didn't have anything to do with domestic. It was more or less a battery charge because he also hit an additional elderly man, an elderly woman, 55 years old. They rushed back into their homes and they were the ones that called the police while these two girls escaped out of the window. And it says here in the article that it was Tony Hughes' girlfriend was the one that got Connor off the hook with the girls and also got him off the hook with the assault charge with the same club with the same women and the elderly man so she she pretty much got him off completely she go press charges as of now we don't know and i reached out to tony huge for a statement and um uh, it was actually really long uh, i didn't quite understand it all right it's time to get into my lawyer bag when i saw this this right here showed me all i needed to know because as a lawyer these are separate entities Connor Murphy and yourself are separate parties, separate incidents. So as a lawyer, you would be able to separate yourself and not seem to come off as personally invested. And when I saw that Tony Hughes is saying things that are leaning me to believe that he's now personally invested to protect Connor Murphy, that means that he needs to protect Connor Murphy to protect him. So as soon as I see that, and let's zoom in here. Yeah, this statement right here is the Freudian slip. So as a lawyer, Tony states, why does everything about this event revolve around golf, a ransacked house, and publicity? Tony Splooge, it doesn't really have to revolve around an event that revolves around golf, a ransacked house, and publicity. But a golf club, a ransacked house, and publicity. Do you see wherein lies the Freudian slip? Where the lawyer can't mention the murder weapon because it would implicate guilt. And that's one thing a lawyer doesn't do is implicate guilt. And in mentioning the golf club, you would be implicating guilt, sir. So everything else, and this is, he's, he's one of the type of guys where he could talk himself into a corner or talk himself into a trap. He did just that. And so everything else from here shows me he's personally invested into protecting Connor Murphy because if he doesn't protect Connor Murphy, then he's unprotected. It is that simple. So Tony Huge, you really have some explaining to do. I'm not going on a really a smear campaign. I needed to bring these facts to light. I felt the need to do so, but I have to get back to other pertinent activities. Um, this wasn't fun because I really admire what Leo brought to the table and what he made me want to do outside of myself to 
you know, start breaking down case studies, start looking into pharmacology, even more so than more plates, more dates, because I know that they're very systematic in the way they make videos. But the way that Leo hit home and he had another element to it as far as neurological side, well-rounded knowledge of just taking things and being a guinea pig for himself, almost like Boston Lloyd. It was very intriguing and we lost a very big pillar in a society of fakes. And so this is where I'm going to leave it. I'm going to let God do the rest of the work. What caused the oh yeah, tragic all these videos I just made, it's all alleged. It's all alleged. I don't know who these people are. This is just a parody of videos. Just to preface that by saying the last five videos, it was all just a story. It was an act, Connor. It was only an act. I was only acting. I was acting like I was catching you as the murderer. The thing in these last few videos is alleged. It's just a joke. It's all an act. This is just a play. It's all a facade. It's nothing real. I just acted like I knew that Connor Murphy was the hypothetical taker of one's life of Leo Longevity. And I will leave you with this one quote. When our eternal flame on this earth goes out, it is up to us to take that eternal flame and light it back up and carry the torch while we are here on earth. The dead aren't able to do so, so we must protect the dead. Long live Leo, Leo, Leo Rex, Rex, Leo and longevity. If you keep taking mushrooms or LSD at a low dose, you will increase neurogenesis and you will increase dopamine. I believe that doing this for a long period could potentially put you in danger if you're susceptible to it. I believe what's much safer is using a slightly higher dose, rarely. So what I'm talking about is not the hero's dose of golden teacher mushrooms, which most people use four to five grams, but rather something between 500 milligrams to 800 milligrams. I believe this could be f uh, interesting, it's fun. It's like uh, you know going with some people to the pub and having a couple of beers. You're, you feel the serotonin signaling, you get a bit of uh, dopamine transmission, you get a little bit of visual effects, but it's not too intense. If you do this rarely, I believe this would probably be the safest approach. I don't think it's ever safe to do a hero's dose. Almost everybody, I mean, you can't really be sure. So you could, a hero's dose could destroy you. I highly doubt that a 500 to 800 milligram single dose could. So that's just a personal opinion, be careful. Something else I got asked about a lot was whether SSRIs can cause the same problems. A couple of people mentioned that when they began their SSRI medications, they ended up manic. Now I want to tell you guys that the reason that happened to you is not your fault. It's your psychiatrist's fault. There was no reason for that to happen. 